fateful hour we turn, as our fathers before us have turned in all times of trial to God the Most High. Here in the old country, I have asked that Sunday next would be observed as a day of national prayer. It may be possible for many of our um, brothers, uh, brothers, uh, brothers the team, to join their prayers with ours. Let us, with one heart and soul, humbly but confidently commit our call to God and ask his aid that we may valiantly defend the right as it is given to us to see it. So now, the peoples of the empire, the men and women, in all quarters of the globe, I say to you, put into your task, whatever it may be, all of the courage and purpose of which you are capable. Keep your heart proud and your resolve unshaken. And let us go forward to that task as one man, a smile on our lips and our heads held high. And with God's help, we shall not fail. The Empire responds to the King's call. And at Westminster Abbey, heart of the Empire, the statesmen, the soldiers, the ambassadors, and hundreds of ordinary men and women join the mighty congregation. Her Majesty Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands arrives a few moments before their majesties. No one here today could foresee the grave news that has come from Belgium. All the more, it is well for us to show the world that we still believe in divine guidance, in the laws of Christianity. May we find inspiration and faith from this solemn day. The people of London, with British people throughout the kingdom and the empire, joined in the National Day of Prayer for strength and guidance in the days to come and in thanksgiving for blessings already received. Many attended the service at Westminster Abbey and there was a large Catholic congregation at Westminster Cathedral.